Hi everybody and welcome to my Unruly Housewife channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about um, gilding flakes which you can use with your polymer clay. Um, it's not a sponsored video, I'm using Indigo Blue uh, Mega Flakes in Winter Dawn and Lancashire Rose. But um, you can also get um, gilding flakes from Cosmic Shimmer and also from a company called Nuvo and I think there'll probably be some others. Uh, because these are called Mega Flakes I assumed that they would be bigger than the other sorts and certainly when I opened this one <laughs> they are quite big. Uh, this is actually what's left of some of them. There were huge sort of folded pieces of paper, even this one here look. I'll try and show you using some toothpicks, it's quite hard to do. Like massive folded piece of foil. Now I don't think that was happening, it hasn't happened in this one so I don't know if it's typical or if it's some sort of mistake, although even there look, that's still quite big. Anyway, these are the golden flakes that I was using. And um, this is not so much a tutorial as just uh, showing you the sorts of experiments that I've been doing because I'm quite new to gilding flakes and I will tell you some of the problems I had and maybe some of the solutions I found. Okay, so this is a bit of um, Black Sculpey Primo which I've rolled out. It's just like on number one on my pasta machine. I'm just using it for an example. And you can see it's kind of flecked because it's leftovers from some of my experiments. And I'm going to show you what I mean uh, in a moment, what things I've been doing. Now, you can apply um, gilding flakes direct to the clay. And the idea is to try and spread them out and sort of keep them flat because then they adhere to the clay pretty well. Now, I've been using a soft brush to do this, this is fairly soft. Um, when I used a harder brush it did sort of make lines into my gold flake. Um, I used my fingers a bit there. Um, word is that if you put your fingers all over your uh, gilded sheets you're going to end up perhaps later down the line with some tarnishing so it's best to try not to put fingers all over them like I did just then <laughs> and uh, try not to sneeze or cough or generally do anything that makes a lot of air movement because um, that is going to result in a bit of a mess. If you do this on paper or card you can then fold it up afterwards and tip your little pieces of flakes back into the jar Okay, now I'm doing this one. These are very pretty. They've got um, special little finishes on them. Little rainbowy sort of effects, I'll show you. And what I'm trying to do is to push these down and spread them out so that they're as flat onto the clay as possible. Because where it folds over, obviously it doesn't, it won't adhere to the clay as well. I'll show you this because it's really pretty. See that lovely shimmery sort of red, blue, gold effect. It's quite a chore, slowish kind of chore to do this. Um, you might find it relaxing or you might find it annoying. Depends what you're doing really. <laughs> Depends on what mood you're in. Okay so I'm spreading these out on here and I don't want to fill in every gap today. And you can see I used some of the silver from the other pot, so I might go and find that. And I'm just trying to sort of chase this down. It's fiddly to do. And I think even by the end of the video, we're still going to be talking about how to flatten this out. But can you see there, look? I want this to stick to the clay, and it won't stick to anything if it's folded. I want a hair on it. I've found a toothpick quite useful. Maybe tweezers would help. I 
if you've used Mega Flakes before and you've got any um, hint, hints or tips, leave them in the comments and we will all be able to look through and share them, won't we? So that's the gold. And I think just for fun, we'll put a bit of the, um, we'll, we'll put a bit more copper and then we'll put some silver. I'm going to have to use my fingers. If you get a couple of these and you want, don't want the sheet to be as long, you can sort of tear it apart. I haven't seen an awful lot of tutorials on YouTube about this and I'm beginning to know why. <laughs> It's quite fiddly. It's all just scrubbing it a bit. Even when you use a soft brush, it does leave marks. Right, so we're going to pretend that that's enough now. Just so that we can crack on. Never did get round to that silver, did I? There's a little bit on my finger there. Let's use that. There you go. Um, one of the things I've seen people using in conjunction with the uh, flakes is this um, mica powder and this one here is reflex violet and I thought it looked really pretty and although the contrast is nice with the metallics um, you know the black is a nice contrast it's also fun to put the purple in and I'll show you later on what that looks like when it's done. But obviously you have to do this after you've stuck down all your foil because you don't want to stop the foil from sticking. So there we have it. I'm not going to do any more than that for this particular event. And now it's a good idea. Some people put it through the pasta machine. Well it's a good idea to get a roller, something like that. Make sure it's a bit cleaner than mine and just Give that a little roll, try and get it all fixed together. You could also, at this point, if you wanted, texture your um, clay and your gilding with a texture sheet. I'm not squirting a lot of water or stuff onto my texture sheet. This piece of paper is priceless, isn't it? Gosh, never mind. Okay, that didn't come out very deeply, but you can see. You can imprint a pattern onto it, and um, probably best to do it with a plan in mind rather than some spontaneous thing that I just did. <laughs> now we'll put this on here. and cut through and it does cut through quite nicely this can then go into the oven and I might finish off the purple obviously and uh, the bit you get left over a lot of people can just squish that up and make it into beads or make it into flecked clay um, when you put these on if you were to put it through the pasta machine you might well get this kind of effect uh, a crackle effect but when I did it with the roller I didn't press that hard so that's probably not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life but I think you get the idea of how you can apply it to the clay now we'll come on to the things that I've made and they're all sort of test pieces because um, if I show you them here is one that's just been baked on, but nothing has been done to it. And it does hold up reasonably well to scratching. Well, that's not bad at all, look. But you can sort of damage it. And I thought I would like to seal it and use something just to bring it out a little bit more. Um, so this is one now this is a patterned one so it's slightly different these are all kind of different because i was just falling around with ideas and i'm sharing that with you um this one here i have 
varnished and I used a couple of coats of this which is Duraclear Americana Duraclear gloss varnish which I use a lot and I noticed that it was quite good but it still wasn't as robust as I'd like it to be say if it was going to be on a bracelet or something so even though the varnish was on top I'm not sure that this was baked on as much as it should be that one I didn't use a roller on and that may have been the problem I just pushed it on with a brush um, yeah so how to seal it on and a couple of people made suggestions to me and I actually asked my patrons on my patreon account which I have now uh, unruly housewife on patreon it would be great if you feel like supporting me on there if you enjoy these videos and um, I was asking my patrons um, what they suggested and they said perhaps um, transparent clay translucent clay I used Fimo translucent white because that was the only translucent clay I had this is on number five on my pasta machine and it hasn't it doesn't look great does it it's kind of masked it way too much I even tried with a heat gun over the top but it's uh, yeah not very see-through I then managed to put it through on number seven because it's kind of ripping a little bit why on earth I decided to texture it <laughs> nobody will ever know again I used the heat gun a little bit as well I hate using a heat gun I don't like using it at all it makes me think there's going to be fumes and I'm opening the door wide and everything but people do swear by them for some aspects and look you've got um, two quite different sort of looking things there um, people set their uh, gilding flakes into all kinds of things resin and maybe you know in different layers through this it might look pretty but I think in this instance it didn't really create the finish that I wanted so I then decided to try this which is the transparent liquid Sculpey and I also tried this which is the Fimo liquid gel um, this is the translucent liquid Sculpey I beg your pardon it's in fact the Sculpey clear transparent which is the new one I baked it I also used a heat gun it bakes at a different temperature than the Primo clay which is crazy because they're both made by Sculpey uh, <laughs> but nevertheless I um, just did it as hot as it said for the uh, transparent uh, the clear transparent I think the effect was pretty good I used it on raw clay and that was a bit of a mistake because it's a sort of the black came through into the liquid a bit so I would suggest that you use this on baked clay so bake it first and then apply that and bake it again uh, what else would I say about it yeah it's very very hard as I was saying earlier to get these flakes to lay down flat and that shows when you look I don't know if you can see the sort of texture of it there there's little sticky outy bits and probably with experience I would be better at getting them flat but uh, hmm. this is the uh, Fimo one and I think this has done a great job here this looks really nice still a little bit of the lumps and bumps but definitely a good sort of effect quite shiny a little bit more shiny than the Sculpey one and look at that uh, powder I think that works really really well in the gaps so I was quite pleased with that I need to work on flattening them out but I think they've come out really well and last but not least I tried this which was the glossy accents it's made by Ranger and this is really fun you don't bake this you use it after baking I sort of used a bit of my leftovers and tried it out and I was so impressed that I am um, sunk down into the pattern which is great I was so impressed that I tried it on an actual heart with the um, mega flakes on and I really think it's good now with this one I took it right to the edges and I was very very careful 
and with this one I sort of did it quite quickly because it was a last minute idea and it looks as if it's pulled away but I think that's mostly me poking around with it and not having the patience to leave it. If you leave it overnight sitting it, it uh, and you go right up to the edges with it and everything it doesn't pull away that was just that was just me. So you sort of um, pour it out with this little nozzle and just go all around the edges and then I kind of zigzag across the middle and I use a needle or a pin or something to pop the bubbles and drag them to the edge. The best tutorial I've seen for this is by Cindy Leets and I will put a uh, link to that down below in my description. So yeah, so I think that came out really nicely and it's quite robust as well. So I think my favourite two out of all the experiments that I did were these, get those out, the uh, liquid Fimo and the uh, glossy accents by Ranger. They are definitely my favourite two, closely, very closely followed by the Sculpey Clear Transparent. If you decide to uh, give these a go and experiment with ways of sealing them, do let me know. Ask any comments and uh, leave any ask any questions and leave any comments down below and thank you very much for watching i love you all bye bye